Welcome to the Block Party Academy, where we teach you from the ground up the foundations and fundamentals of playing offensive line. Today, we're going into some ball talk, and we're going to talk some slide protection. Let's go. Hey, hey! Welcome to the Block Party Academy. My name is Coach Parker. My name isn't Coach Parker. My name is Sam Parker. I'm a coach at Ferris State University, um, and this is our YouTube channel. We teach exactly what we teach in our classroom to anybody that wants to learn from us. Uh, coach Anise, who is our head coach at Ferris State, is a, was a high school coach for a very long time and is in the um, Michigan High School uh, Michigan High School Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame. It's a mouthful. So he is very inviting to all high school coaches and outside coaches to learn. And I think as a coaching community, we need to be very involved with this. And there is nothing um, more useful that you can benefit from than learning pass protections at an elite level from a guy that is a run game coordinator <laughs> and, and spends his whole time on the run game. Um, this will be a little bit of a different episode. It's probably going to be longer than the previous ones because there's so much to talk about when it comes to pass protection. Um, and, and, and I'm not even going to really, I'll, I'll get into technique and, and that sort of stuff, but we'll save drill work and a lot of the technique uh, for a more in-depth episode for like one-on-one -on -one blocks. Today, we're going to get through the scheme, um, why we want to call it and all of that stuff. So let's get into this. And uh, with protections too, you know, it's it's funny because you'll watch a coach introduce it and he's putting it up against the most, you know, it's a four, two box, it's two linebackers, four defensive linemen, no movement, nothing. It's like, yeah, it's going to look crisp. It's going to look really good, especially when the ball's getting out in two seconds. Like there's not, there's not much going on there. Myself right now, if that ball gets out in two seconds, I can go out there and take the rep. You know, obviously the defense lineman is going to go through my body and possibly throw me into the quarterback, but I can withhold long enough for that ball to get out of there. So when we do get into film today, a uh, little bit different, and I'll explain later. So let's get rolling on this. Like I said, my name is Sam Parker, um, and you can follow me at any one of those spots. I've, I've been at Ferris State. I played at Ferris State. I'm a West Michigan guy. Uh, th this is a real home for me and um it's been a real big blessing to be the offensive line coach here for as long as i have been um and so now let's get into the philosophy behind this okay so the philosophy of pass protection at some point in the early 1900s some sick individual decided that he was going to throw the ball forward and split the offensive line coach's time 50-50 between all of your run game stuff and pass protection. And to be honest with you, that is how your time is really spent when it comes to X's and O's for offensive line coaches. You might have one pass protection. You might have five, six, seven. It doesn't matter um, how many you have. It's how effective you use them. I think if you have one pass protection that you can run consistently and support the quarterback with time, you are going to have greater success than trying to have seven or eight. Um, the most effective year I've ever had as an offensive line coach in 2019, we allowed, I think, seven sacks in the regular season. Um, maybe we might have been at nine. It was single digits. And one of the reasons for that was we had, we, we just said, we're going to have two protections. And we also uh, support our quarterback and had a seven man 
sometimes eight man protection and we just were not going to allow sacks and made that uh, a, a very big point um we had a little bit more simplified offense and our numbers offensively were not as effective or as high as they normally are we were number one in points per game and yards per game in 21 um i don't know what we were in 19. it wasn't you know it wasn't top in the country might have been for rushing yards but certainly not passing yards and we just we really made sure that we were going to be very protected and we weren't going to throw the ball a ton and we were throwing a lot more rpos and in the last two years we've bet we've had a quarterback that had a greater arm so we were trying to you know we're trying to expand the field and that sort of stuff and taking more shots and being riskier with our play calling a little bit and it was risk reward we put up more yards more points and um you know we're slinging it more and utilizing our wide receivers more but we also took significantly more sacks and quarterback hits so and and we had more protections because of that so it is you know it's it really is um like a fine line of what suits your offense more than anything and it's just the offense line's got to deal with it whatever you got whatever you got for a quarterback back there you got to make sure it works so here are the different types of protection. We have slide, we have lock, we have man, we have uh, sprint out, we have uh, you, you know off your run game, and the amount of blockers that you can have: five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you have any more than nine, I don't know who's running the route. Okay, but let me draw up what we're talking about with these two, um, with the the main protections here. Okay. So Oh my gosh. It's so I, this mouse, man. I like having crisp illustrations. It's very difficult on huddle. All right. So if I have my five offense ugh, I have my five offense alignment here. This mouse is so sensitive to my five offense alignment here, okay? And just generically, I'm going to go through each one. So slide protection, all right? We are all sliding in the same direction, leaving this gap here available for this or some sort of route, or we're saying that there is no defender here and we're going to leave it open, all right? Slide protection. Lock protection is a man slide. So we're saying these two guys are man on the defenders that are here. So we have a nose tackle and a D end. And these guys are sliding just the way they were. We call this a fan when it's three individuals doing this. Slide is everybody, and slide really is these two with a fan. The next one would be man, okay? And that is where all of these guys are man on man, all right? You'll see this when it comes to a front that has a TNT front, all right, or a bear front. Where there's five defense linemen over five guys um back in the day teams would do this and nobody would move and now you're seeing all sorts of games and pressure where guys are darting into here looping back inside somebody dropping out there's a lot of creativity defenses are doing that kind of makes it difficult for man blocking but the other thing you can do with man blocking is set for depth to these points all right and get off the line and work your way uh, inside out, okay? The next one would be sprint out. So for sprint out, we have, we're elongating an edge, and these guys are working, you know, basically uh, your sweep scheme that we talked about earlier with these two guys on the backside working what's called waterfall, which means they're setting in for anybody and if there isn't anybody they're going to be turning their backs to protect the quarterback who is doing this off the play we do not run sprint out we run some sweet scheme but have not run sprint out and then my favorite in terms of protection is off your run game okay so let's say you're a team that runs a lot of power well now you can run power 
okay, and just tell these guys we're not going down the field. Have the running back to here set to this point where the launch point would now be in this vicinity behind the guard for the quarterback to throw. And you can do that with every run play that you have. You know, I think my favorite is zone because it marries with your your slide protection, but you're selling zone. So if you're a heavy zone team or whatever it is, if whatever uh, scheme that you have and you run a, a significant amount of, you know, I would recommend you, it, it putting some um, run game. And, and I know Alabama with, and I, I think Texas with Sark, uh, Coach Sark, they do this and just tag it with pink, meaning pass, so they can get into, you know, if they're a wide zone team with a lock on this side, all right, and this kind of action, defenses are going to be flowing to this wide zone combination, and you're really neutralizing the pass rush because, you know, teams can't read and decipher pass versus run and being able to get the ball out to that point. And as we talk about five, six, seven, eight, nine blockers and how that would look, if you have a five-man concept, your running back is typically doing this. If it's six, he is now fitting in or like slide protection into the C gap that we'll talk about today. A uh, seven-man protection would include a tight end to this point and your running back into here and everybody else sliding away. Um, an eight-man would be adding, you know, a tight end here. Hey, Coop. Romar, Coop. I always got to get this dog in control. <laughs> but I like doing the presentations with the dog. It gives me an audience. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. And... Obviously, a nine man would be adding, you know, just one more guy into this fray. So let's put a tight end on this side, okay? Which, you know, you're going to use maybe in short yardage, if at all. Very few teams have it. So those are the styles of protections. And again, we talk about scheme with similar concepts, all right, to match our plays and then tags off of it. So uh, like we just talked about, you know, scheme wise, you, you can have some different stuff and then blossom it into, um, you know, your play that you want to run. So off slide protection, we have something similar with three offense linemen sliding to a single point. And the two that change are the, the call side. So here's what you need to know about pass pro. And um, you don't need to know everything about pass pro in order to have effective pass pro. You got to, as a coach, you got to find what works best for your players and your quarterback and marry the two. And pass pro is very difficult. Like pull your hair out difficult because there, as I just showed all the different kinds of pass protection you can have, essentially there are three, you know, that in sprint out, let's say four, okay? If you have a sprint out, a man, a lock uh, protection, which is man slide and a slide protection. So you have four and that would be a lot. And I think and it's not a lot, but that you can add the technique to where one you're jump setting and one you're actually getting off the ball. So if you did that for each of them, there's a total of eight. Schematically, there's four different schemes of those plays that you can do. There's four different kinds that a defense can scheme for. So the defense has an incredible advantage. It would be like if you're on the offensive side of the ball and the defense can only do four things on defense, you know, out of one front as well. They can only play one front and they can only do four things. And so it's easy for the defense to scheme up, you know, these pick and rolls and these twists and blitzes and be creative for a lot of stuff. And it's art, it's very challenging to be able to put your guys in position to that spot. Um, slide protection is the easiest to handle this or sprint out and we'll go into why. Um, but the reason that being the majority of throws occurs somewhere between four to seven yards directly behind the center. So if the, if the quarterback 
is always in this, and I always draw this B for ball and center, and that's a really depressing B. But the quarterback is always in this sort of vicinity, four to seven yards behind. So defenses can scheme to this point every time that you're, you know, when the launch point is in that vicinity, you're basically putting up a pop up into those spots and telling, you know, the defense, hey, we're going to be throwing from this spot. And it's very difficult to deal with that. Not only that, but regardless of how many you have in protection, there is over 200, 200 front variations um, and games and and blitzes and all that stuff. If you really dissected it of how many a, a team can do, and especially on third down where they're super aggressive, you have over 200 things to prepare for. So if I asked an offense lineman, hey, against this protection, you got to be ready for 200 things. That's no good, right? Nobody can be that effective. Me coaching it, if I was on the field, I couldn't be that effective and knowing what to do. So you have to give simple terms and simple, easy to follow instructions for these guys to execute at a high level. And the technique of these blocks is much more simple than people want to give credit to. At the end of the day, you're going to put your body between the defender and the ball, and that's it. You don't need to have a precise kick set. You don't need to have, uh, you know, this the super aggressive stance. You don't need to have all of these things that we see on social media to be effective in pass pro. Um, I think one of the best pass protectors in the last 10 years in the league is David Bakhtiari of uh, the Green Bay Packers, who works a slap technique of wide hands to this point. And if you in two hands with it and you tell any um offensive line coach, hey, your guy's going to be slap techniquing in two hands wide on this, that, you know, everybody would be like, no, heck no, no, we're not doing that at all. But it works for him. And he has mastered that technique at the highest level um, imaginable. So find what works for your guys, keep it simple and allow them the freedom to accomplish their technique, um, how they see fit. The, the best pass protectors I've had, the biggest thing that we've coached them on is where to be on the field when the ball is being thrown and the lines that they need and the, the philosophy of the play and where they're, you know, where they got to be in their footwork from their knees up. Um, you know, we, we work it and drill it and all this stuff. But when you go on the field, man, and there's a dude coming at you, you're not thinking like, okay, I need to keep, you know, my hands here and extend one punch to this spot and and be precise with all this you're you're thinking i where do i got to be standing and so that's i think significantly more important than um the other stuff so i drew up slide protection but slide protection in general is five offensive linemen moving in the same direction um to, to each have a single gap that they're responsible for. It's very similar to zone philosophy. So if your day one install is zone, your day one pass protection is slide. Um, and this is how we teach it too. Day one, we teach zone to anybody that's starting off. Once they feel like they've got a, a good feel for it, we're going to teach them slide protection. It'll be the second thing that we go over. And then we can go into our variations of zone and conceptual, they can handle that. And then eventually you get into gap scheme and, and man schemes um, and, and working in that. Uh, and the thing with the slide protection is you do need a six protector. You can have it without it, but you're banking on the defense not sprinting through that open side gap. Like you need to have a quick hot. You need to have something that occupies that C gap um, and takes advantage of it. If you don't or you don't intend on it, you need to have a six blocker. So how we teach it, much like we do our zone, which would be look lean and climb, right? That we keep those same principles on here. This is look plant kill. And really we can say look lean kill, uh, but look, Look, what is in my gap? Is there somebody in my gap? If there is, I'm going to put my body between him and the quarterback. 
So if I am sliding here, all right, and I'm the center, and that quarterback's right behind me, that doesn't mean I'm getting all the way to this point because now he has a free lane to the quarterback. I need to put my body between him and the quarterback. The big one would be the tackle, right? He is setting in, and just to set in isn't enough because this guy is doing the same, which creates a longer gap that he's responsible for but this guy has a, a straight line to the quarterback. So we want to make sure that we're putting our bodies between the defender and the quarterback. Plant. So look, I have somebody in my gap and block them. If I don't, I'm going to take my sets and I'm going to plant. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to use my body as a post to help the person outside of me. And it's also going to give the quarterback a running lane or a throwing lane. He can step up and throw or step up and go. Um, and we want to make sure that we have clear lanes for the quarterback. When I plant, it, I'm going to look for looper to blitzer to floater. And if there is nothing after that, so what that would look like is I take my sets here, right? I'm into my A gap. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. I am looking for something coming over, all right? I'm looking for blitzer coming here. And then my eyes will revert back out to here, which would be a floater. You know, somebody dabbling in, spying the quarterback, which will chase him out of there. And if those three aren't there, I'm going to kill, which means kill shot. Okay. It means I'm going to sprint and go and, and, and take care of anything with my buddy or the nearest defender that I see. The, the big thing of the kill shot is to get out of the quarterback's lane, okay? I, I cannot stand a big body sitting here, and the quarterback is ready to sprint up, and this guy has his arms out wide and is stomping the ground looking for anybody coming, and the, it's been three seconds. Like, at the end of the day, the worst that you could do is set on air and then sprint to the sideline just to get out of the quarterback's way to take his shot um, down the field or running the ball. That guy's got enough on his plate. We don't need to stand in front of him while he's trying to make a decision or a throw. Uh, the assignments, we have call side and run side. So run side is fanning, which will be the same in the next video of our lock protection. And the slide is really for the call side. So call side, when we say slide, they're sliding in. Okay, we will also use this and call it a squeeze call. Um, and this is essentially what we're doing here. All right, we're sliding in to take care of anything there. We're securing our gaps inside and, and, and staying to our rules. Okay, and fanning out, we want to fan to any edge threats and defend the edge aiming to the inside number of the defenders. And something that we've really trailed from. But when we say fan, and now this year we're making it more and more and more vertical. You know, last year we really wanted to have jump sets going and this time in the spring. Um, and it was not effective for us in the season based on what we were doing. I love jump sets, but it just wasn't our bag offensively. So we are setting and making sure that we're not getting off this line too far. This is what we were doing and need to be working more vertical back um, to not create such large gaps that guys can run through, which is what defense are doing just in general right now. You see Michigan in the national championship game. I mean, they're taking total advantage of that. Our footwork, when we're sliding, it's post-post. When we're fanning, it's our kick set, which is kick-kick. We want to get two kick sets down before we make contact. And that would be the same you know, as our run game, two steps down before contact, making and striking on our third set. The mentality for slide protection, this is the safest protection we have. And really anybody can have. Because you're, you're sending five guys in the same direction. It doesn't matter what front they're going against. You know, it doesn't really matter what kind of blitzes they are. You should be protected in all instances with this and you can run it blind and feel really good about it. It takes the least amount for your offensive line to comprehend 
So if you're a young coach deciding on, you know, how can we throw the ball and what protections you use, number one, go with your run game first. Um, and then number two would be installing a slide protection. Because blockers are assigned a gap and not a man, it will work against any and all fronts, like I said. And protection in general will never allow anyone to have a free, unevaded shot at the quarterback because your gap sound with it. It's very simple to teach and put in. Um, but here's the con. It puts a lot of stress on a guy who doesn't pass pro much in Indy, which would be your running back. So if you have a guy that's physical into it, put him out there to play running back and get to that spot. If you don't, this is where it can be bad because you might be sending your five offensive linemen and they're not bringing, you know, they're, when they are playing base and they're not bringing these games and stunts and stuff, you might be sending five offensive linemen to handle three guys. And you're telling your running back to handle what could be the, their best pass rusher. So it's simple and it's awesome on a whiteboard and next to his nose and teaching it and stuff, but to actually execute it, it puts a lot of stress on that guy. So there's a couple of ways, and we'll talk about that your running back, if he's not good at it, um, at pass pro or isn't as physical as you would desire to be effective at uh, handling this, okay? So now what to expect on the field. Before we get into that, I just want to remind you that all of these presentations you can find here um, at, you know, coachparker.selfi.store and they're free. So if you want them to, to, and it's just the presentations and clips, you can put it on your huddle. You can, you, you know, you can put it on your phone. You can always reference back to this, um, this presentation for whatever you're working on and it's free. There's other stuff there if you want to buy, if not, so be it. So, Let's get into these protections, okay? And I want to make sure, real quick, I want to make sure that we're starting off with some base ones because, so we'll start, I'll keep it in order a bit from four down to, um, to three down. Move that one. Okay, cool. So, Here's the thing, all right? When it comes to pass protection, all right, every coach will start off showing you the most, you know, the, the and it's always them executing it well, all right? The thing with pass protection, all right, it's when you when you execute it well, it's exactly what you saw on the whiteboard. There's not enough to learn. It's you you want to know what the problems that you're going to see are, okay? I'm a problem guy. And, uh, you know, it's my job to fix the problem. So let me show you the pass pro as designed. This is a full slide here. All right. And now one more time. So you can see the offensive lineman going the same direction. I'll run it slow here. Okay. So let's get into exactly what we're talking about. Now, number one. When you want to run these slide protections, all right, number one is quicks. If that ball is getting out of there fast, we know that we're going to have everything in front of us protected. We're not in a big, it's not a big issue for a running back to go block somebody because it's going to be for two seconds or less, right? Number two, the, when do I want to go to a slide protection outside of that? It's when our guys have no, we're lacking confidence. We can't really figure out what's going on. Maybe a defense, we get out there and they've done something that we haven't even game planned for or talked about. Well, I don't want to put those guys trying to identify man and switching stuff off. So we'll go to this right away. And here is a pretty good look at what this is um, from, a, from, a, from a four down standpoint. So let me walk you through it. We have our slide and our fan to this point. All right. So look, plant, kill. Look, I have somebody in my gap. All right, I'm going to take this one. Does he have anything in his gap off the hut? Nope. So I'm intending on taking my two sets, looking wide, and then planting to help out here. My tackle, 
has an, a defender. You can see a shadow out here that he's thinking, I got this wide rush here. I need to cut off this lane. On the slide portion here between these two and our squeeze technique, and the thing that we can't see from this copy, but we do have a buck linebacker, and it looks like he's playing him man-to-man. -man. But as we skim it along here, you can see that he is capped with another defender here and is going to be blitzing to this point. So in, in general, from a quarterback standpoint, we want to slide this the other way since this guy plays linebacker and also to the, what rush is really coming from this point. It could be that this guy is the best pass rusher. We're going to slide it to him regardless, and we'll take it if we have to with the buck linebacker. Um, but w this, in terms of numbers-wise, we have five guys on the line here with this one. All right, we want to make sure that we're sliding because this is the fifth dude that's adding um, out of this front. And furthermore, you can see we have three over two to this point. That would be an automatic indicator that we need to be fanning out to the right and switching the protection here. So let's talk about the technique of this play, all right? As these guys set in, and the other thing too, is our right guard has no threat here. So he's thinking this one to this guy crossing, or I'm gonna be thick and help this guy out. So let's take a look after these two sets. Ready? One, two, boom. We are square through here. We're putting our body between the defender and the quarterback. Our right tackle sets in one, two, and is now planting. And look at his plant. All right. He plants and looks what happens. If he continues to keep setting, he's going to put himself in bad position here. And that's actually what our right guard is doing. Once he gets to the fit, look at how his hips keep going wide and now creates this here. And this is what will kill you. All right, is a knifer and a looper in the stunt game picking apart and hitting this hip to this point. Our fan side to the left needs to have this guy planted. So look at his one, two, and this is on the coach here because look at how wide these guys are getting versus depth, which is exactly what I wanted last year is to work a lot more with. And um, we, what happens is look at these gaps that we're creating for these guys. They're much wider. There's a lot more space to play with. You know, our center is landing these two steps, one, two, and look at the distance that's now created by this wide set. Something that we fixed and we're going to work on, but this is a, you know, outside of the wide sets from our left guard, look at the plant and how he's able to help out. And I love that his eyes are still wide just in case this guy comes across and he knows the center can pick up this one into here. The last piece of this puzzle is this guy who does a great job of recognizing, hey, this is my C-gap threat. Oh, he disappears. Now I'm peeling out wide for this delayed pressure. And one of the things that you can do when he's in the box is cut, all right? So when you do have a smaller guy versus asking him to take on this full head of steam bull rush, we can cut and go underneath and stifle this kind of uh, pressure. At the end of the day, we've got good distance between the quarterback and you know what would be the threat here or the trouble. And we're staying away from it, getting the ball out clean for an easy completion. So here's Montana, all right? And we did this earlier about front identification and reading triangles, and this is a big one, okay? And just for anybody to recognize spatial awareness on the field, the one thing I always tell a guy, all right, when we talk about ID triangles, and I'll stop it right here. If I'm the guard, okay, my ID triangle, I can pick any three guys, okay? But look at the distance here, and I always want to identify two uh, defense linemen to two to one linebacker. So look at all this space. There's tons of space that's empty right here, and these linebackers are so darn wide. You got to ask yourself, hey, if we ran the ball, this is second and three. If we ran the ball in between these gaps, like who's getting there? 
So this is an immediate indicator that it is a stunt game. Not only that, but based on the stunt, uh, the front that they're giving us in the in the team that they were, they were a multiple defense team. So our quarterback is saying that the linebacker that has drifted out of there right here is a priority and a threat. Um, I think since this guy is actually a linebacker and this guy is actually a linebacker based on their multiple defense, we want to slide it this way. Again, three over two, but I see what he sees right there. So we have a full slide going this way. All right. And you might ask why our tackles heads are pointed in. It was so darn loud there that you couldn't hear anything. So they're trying to get to the ball. All right. So one, two. All right. We've taken two sets. Now look at this. All right. And this is where you get into a major challenge. On paper, this should turn out for him to take this one, our center to get this guy our guard to plant here and support with this one and our running back to handle this. So we're setting five offensive linemen for three defense linemen. One of the things I was telling you about earlier, boom. So our two sets here, all right, they're running a tax tackle first and around and an X here and first tackle around. All right, so they're bringing this movement back to the side that were our slide side and to the running back point. So now a running back, if the, you know, he's a DN, but I mean, this could easily be a defensive tackle. So he recognizes big beefy dude comes up. This is one of the ways that he can stay, you know, with an advantage here. Um, at the end of the day, you know, and I'll talk more into this, but at the end of the day, all right, as bad as you could be scheme-wise and technique-wise, if you have bottled up pressure to these points and your quarterback has these two lanes, that's a pretty good job, you know, of, of doing what you got to do. But this is what we can't have, right? So how did this happen where we're getting penetration and who's responsible for this? Well, number one, let's take, we're going to start off with our two sets. One, two. All right, look at how our guard is following the eyes of a guy looping around there. He should never be looking back, all right, especially this fast. You know, you can look this way, but you got to remember, it's look, plant, kill, and your look is still a part of your first two sets. So he's already lost by assignment-wise by not looking into here. This guy is reading best pass rush lane when he sees shoulders turn. So another issue that we want to have square shoulders, all right, to eliminate this kind of rush coming inside. So we want our center shoulders to be square. Maybe there's a point where he decides to do this one versus coming back here. But if he goes into this A gap, this is on our guard who needs to be ready to go with this. So how it would look is our guard gets into this. Our center is planted with square shoulders, and we really bottle this up right there. And then take a look at our tackle here. Take a look at his steps, all right? We said earlier our steps need to be two posts. So his first step is a post inside. Pretty nice. Look at his second step. It pops. It stops right there. So with these two guys, we've got bad footwork and technique, and they're also staring at the wrong direction. This is one of the ways that you can really be a slide protection is by the offensive line <laughs> screwing it up for you. And we allow a pressure. Quarterback steals three yards, and we get the first down. Thank you for his feet. This is where we want the quarterback to step up in terms of pocket awareness. But – He's got somebody right in his face, you know, pretty quickly on this one. It is a quick throw, so that ball needs to be out right now. If he sees something that he doesn't like, this is the issue that can happen with it. Let it play. One more time. Slow motion. Okay. So here, and this is one of the reasons that we're changing. You know, I love this kind of width here, 
But you also have to have something in your playbook that stretches and elongates edges to this point. If you don't, teams will naturally fall back in. And also, too, where's the launch point? The further you drift this way, the more space that teams can get to this launch point. But that's on the coach, you know. And and honestly, as we do these videos, I mean, I'm very thankful because it sits me down to, like, watch our technique and it's just me and the two dogs. So there's no, you know, sensitivity training needed for a coach telling me like, Hey, do you think you're setting too wide and me getting defensive about my stuff? Um, I think it's very, it's very helpful to, to develop and get better at what you need to do. And even looking at it, you know, and you know what, let me take you through this play exactly how I would, as I'm looking at it and what I see. Okay. Uh, from exactly where we start from, right? So our stuff is ass, ass, which I went over in the fundamental video. And you need to have something like this at every position group for guys to always reference back and coaches too, to know what you're doing correctly or not correctly. So that's alignment, split, stance, assignment, step, strike. So if I break it down, the first one, alignment and split, our alignment is good. I can see the toes here, but holy cow, look at these splits here. These are, you know, we, this is three to four feet with the left side and three feet here between guard and, and center. So we're putting ourselves up on the left side for trouble. Our assignment. Yep. We all got our assignment down here. Two sets, the same direction and getting to these points. Now let's look at uh, it, oh, excuse me, in our stance, okay? So if I'm looking at stances, I glossed over that one. I like all of our stances, to be honest with you. Um, there's not too many guys that walk out of there without being in a good stance. I'd prefer to see that forearm on the thigh here. I'd like to see this knee kick in a little bit more. You can see it's outside of his frame right there, which will create a rounded back. Same with our guy here. The right side's pretty clean. I'd like to see this hand be brought up a bit, but I love the lower half. Um, and I'd like to see those eyes come up in his stance. Uh, right guard and center are great with it. So assignment, we're at the right spot. And then step. Okay, so I'm looking at everybody's footwork right now. I can see our right guard's first one goes to his toes, which puts your weight going backwards. All right. Same Look at his first step and his first step. So we got a couple of guys setting on their toes, but when they make contact, their weight's in their instep, which I like. But you can see the right guard because he's on his toes. So toes, toes. Look at when he leans on this plant, how long it takes him to be sturdy with this. That's from, you know, needing to get to those spots. So we got our step, and now let's look at our strike. And also with our steps, Okay. We have an interior pressure here and he does take two sets, but because he's on his toes for this one, so toes to then plant, he's in, and also because of his split, he's now given this guy, cause he's thinking I got to cover more ground to get into this. He's given this guy a lane through here, but this is exactly how we want it to be. If we froze this picture, we're in the fit here, center for this one, tackle for this one we're on this one we're on this one and our running back is out to this spot now we're planting but like i said because that foot was on his toes it takes him longer to this spot which you know that's way too much a gap pressure given that he's not even bringing a real rush it's just a bull rush right Like here, I think the tackle, well, the tackle sees this guy coming through, so he's helping and has his eyes here. I mean, that's pretty good. Our running back, you know, and this is part of the issue when you have smaller guys back there to make this collision. That should be a cut. The other thing these guys can do, right, is see his demeanor the entire time is just coming right at the defensive end to bring up a load into this point to try to sell you know, some sort of route or slow him down by being more patient. Well, you know, he's got to recognize this guy. 
So the slower he is and, you know, the more upright and the ability to snap underneath this is key, especially with his frame. But if I freeze it, his knees are underneath. His hips are forward in this engagement. He's making a strike right through here. This is a good fit. It's just unfortunate that he weighs 132 pounds. And then, look, like I said, we're doing this for quicks. Quarterback takes it, throws in the clean pocket, and a clean throw, only two yards out of bounds. <laughs> so here's one with our younger guys, all right? So this is later in a game. We're fortunate enough to be up. We have a young crew out here, all right? Um, and you can see what it looks like with a pretty fresh, greenhorned offensive line. So number one, right, is we're sliding to the open side to the left, and we do have an edge pressure left. So we called this right, we're in the right aiming points. And this is why we wanna get back to cut off here. And when we say back, you're looking to get four to seven at this point, because that's where the quarterback is. Remember, put your body between the defender and the quarterback, which he does, right? But look at where this guy's shoulders are. Within two steps, he is now have, has a free lane to the quarterback because we're working too flat and he's working vertical. So we need to be able to get in front of this one. But from an assignment standpoint, we're all at the right spot. Slide protection, we're all going this way. Our slide on the inside here and our squeeze from the right side, two sets. He's thinking, you know, our right guard is definitely being aware of this guy coming across here. And this is the thing too, our center, you look at his sets, right? He takes one and comes back this way. We do not want to do that. We want to stay two sets before we react to a defense. Right guard gets that point, shows it up, leans back to this spot. Look at our right tackle. And this is the biggest one of the offensive line because this guy has a lane for the quarterback and this guy is getting out of the way. So he has got to get square and get in front of this dude to that point. So he makes the contact on the near number. That's uh-oh. But look how he keeps fighting and forces him out wide. And now look at this pocket, right? We got beat from this guy, but because we're attacking and being firm at the line of scrimmage, we slowed him down enough to not make the, the, the pressure with the quarterback and that we're serviceable with our left guard to this point for a quarterback to step up and throw. So although we end up losing on two of these guys because of their physicality and, the, you know, let's be honest, they're holding on long enough for this throw clean throw nobody you know one guy that is anywhere near um but at the end of the day if you can hold these gaps and the space in front of the quarterback clean you're going to be good and my whole thing is we're going to dominate these gaps we're going to be good in the b gaps and whatever happens in the c's happens in the c's and always want to work inside and out with an offensive line protect the nearest line to the quarterback and look at the outcome. Easy throw, easy touchdown because your protection is allowing your quarterback to do it. So pre-snap here, they've already identified, hey, this guy is triggering to this point. This is one of the things that can happen, right? Is you check it, you're sliding the other way and you might have checked the check. So we might've just kept it on, you know, what's your quarterback should be doing this because this guy is the linebacker to this point and sending him here, he keeps it on because he believes they check the check and we're into this spot. Now, this is what can happen, right? So we talk about those splits too wide from our left guard. As we look at our alignment, which is good, our stances, which I like. Again, the form on the thigh board for this one and knee turned in. Same with his knee, which forms a rounded back for both of these guys more so. Like the stance out the right side though, really do. Assignment wise, we're all going in the same direction. And because this guy has such a split on him here and with the technique being so tight, that's gonna be an issue. 
So we got to make sure his step is good. And I can see it is on his toes, which is going to bounce him into this and take these pop steps. And right now comes an, another lesson. This guy has a line, a lane, and a line. And because my shoulders are square and I'm working flat, I'm in, you know, like kind of an oh crap moment. So I got to turn and sprint through him. Turns into a trap block. Like I said, in any instance, whether this is zone or otherwise, if this guy gets behind you in the backfield and this guy has the ball, we need to just get him going. Turn it into a trap. But is it entirely on this guy for what's happening here? Look at the center. All right. He, when he makes the contact here, he's square. We need to be planted up on this. And if we're square, this guy can't hit our hip, which turns us wider. But once he gets in this collision, look at his hips and what he's doing to this point. As he keeps skating and skating. So now, again, the ball is on the hash. On the hash. Look at where he is by the time it's thrown. Okay. That's way too much distance. And this guy has an inside lane. So yes, this is how you solve these problems when you come about it. Number one, the split's too big. Number two, both of these guys are getting too wide with their footwork. I can't, and I, that's on the coach, right? To this point to be there. And number three, once making the strike, we're not forcing him around, but we're creating an even wider spot. So it turns from a bad situation to a worse situation with this guy getting a free rush lane. And lastly, in terms of assignment, look at a right tackle. All right. He is, this is a big gray area, right? He takes his two sets, he pops, and this guy's going inside. He can turn back to this point he's not wrong for turning back but what he is wrong for is this he never plants and his eyes never get out here so if they do bring a pressure out wide he's not even looking at it he's staring at this guy it shows me that he's got a, an assignment issue if i could see him plant and keep his eyes disciplined outside and then turn back which is takes a full step then we're good. But I can see that he isn't, which means that our assignment is wrong on that one. So now let's get into the fun fronts, okay? And some of the other issues that we'll see. And this is where it really gets like, I mean, this is really, if I'm being honest, when you listen to another coach talk about protections and stuff, once you get through the whiteboard and this is where we gotta go, there should be a slow installation period of different fronts, movements, stunts, pressures, blitzes, simulated, like all of that stuff should be brought in slowly um, because you're you, like third down defenses these days it, are blossoming into uh, run sit defenses seen on first and second down, especially like us, a team that runs a ton of 10 personnel, you're going to have a lot of these crazy movements and fronts and aggressive style of defenses because you're giving them six gaps to play with. You're not adding anything. So six gaps responsible. That means you can have six defenders tight end. If you do the math, that leaves five to cover five skill. Um, and especially if you have a guy in the backfield versus going empty, you can now, they can now bring almost a seventh guy and really challenge you in the box. Um, it, it's just one of the issues. So, like I said, we want to, I want to coach and get better at what we're doing against the worst situation, because that's when protection matters most. It matters the least when you're beating the crowd out of some team or you, you know, you've got, you've got better personnel than they do. It's okay. Their personnel is equal to or better than us. Their scheme is wildly aggressive. This is what we want to practice for because that's what's going to win you games. That's the two-minute drill. That's the big play that we need because they're calling their big play. We're calling our big play, and we got to be able to protect. So this is exactly what you're going to see. I like how I'm saying all that to maybe cover. I really, I don't know if we get this clip um, 
I don't know if we execute this or if we don't. Okay. So we do execute this, and this is a really good look, and uh, it's a, another issue. Okay, so we're versing uh, a, a three down front. We have three defensive linemen with the walked up linebackers. So you could also classify this as an under G and classify him as he's on the line. So we, we're considering him a part of the, the line, regardless of his number or his stance. And now we have two overhangs right outside there. So quarterback is sliding it to the two defensive linemen and the edge threat over here. As you can see it's equal to both sides. So either way, you know, with how wide these guys are, somebody, you know, we have, regardless of what way we slide it, there's going to be two outside of one side or another. So two sets. If I break it down further, stances, like the stances, like that his eyes are out to this point, want his here. We get to it, right? So let's look at the first two sets. One, two, boom. So we have a collision at this point, a good fit with extended elbows. We're looking for this one who's going vertical, this one who's going B-gap. We have a dropper here and a dropper here. So we did call it the right way. You know, we're sending our five offense linemen to the three-man rush side. And now the other thing that we can do is this. Because of his ID triangle, right? ID the down linemen. So, okay, those are the two down linemen that I'm IDing. Where's the next nearest linebacker? He's here. So I have two guys here. One of them is coming in or coming through the C gap. The other one has to drop or come through the B gap. So as he sets one, two, look at how fast his eyes get to this point. He sees him drop in in space. He's immediately snapping his head back to here because he's he knows there's two guys out here. Okay. Gets to it, you know, footwork wise is because he's hopping into this. So one good set, but then look at that hop. So that's going to stop his feet. Thus, he's in retreat mode coming back to this point. Now, this is something that you can't do if you're a running back. If you see an offensive lineman trying to help you onto a, a guy, we cannot cut. Because that is a high-low, and it's barely a high-low, but it's enough that this play should be coming back that the officials didn't get because we didn't get him down. But he does go low, and our hand is on him. So this is an instance, too, where the running back has to stay upright, and he's already committed pre-snap because of the quality of this player that he's going to cut him. And that's an issue. We look back at everything else here, right? Our right guard sees this guy coming back into it. And again, because our left guard is planting and he's looking for looper to blitzer to floater, and now we see the floater coming through there. So he's got eyes for floater. Our guard is turning back for a kill shot. We have two good fits We have from our center and our right tackle. This is what I really like here. Look at the right tackle. Getting into there, using a great hinge in his elbow, flexing the bicep, controlling the defender, pressing him through there and out of the frame. And it's a pretty good pocket where we got it. And look. Big play. Almost a touchdown. So here you go, right? This is one of the biggest reasons why you want to run slide protection. So they start off, holy crap, they've stemmed into a new front, but it doesn't change anything for us, right? Look at this. So if we went, and just to give you an example, if we're in a man protection here, okay? So he's manned up, he's manned up, and let's say we're manned across the board. So man to man, and now he is manned on the first immediate threat that's coming through there. As soon as this happens, all right, there is now a great deal of confusion for the old line because is am I now manned on this guy? This guy is a linebacker. Am I manned on him? Am I manned on the guy that's across from me? Am I, you know, where are we going with this stuff? And now take a look at it. Because we're in a full slide with a squeeze on the right side, we've done a good job over the season of tightening our splits down to combat this. 
we're in good position. This is exactly where we want to be on this. All right. Another coaching point is the right tackle here. Okay. Because of the stem that they do pre-snap, he knows based on his ID triangle. So two down linemen. All right. Where's the next guy? My linebacker's here. So if I really, if I draw that triangle up, the flatter the triangle, the wonkier the defense is going to be playing it. So that's pretty wonky. They're going to be doing something, you know, between these guys, and they bring him back to this point. So now our tackle can plant, and he's now in the fit with this guy. Hand-wise, right, look at how wide his hands are and how this guy can control his chest when you do have wide hands. Furthermore, check this out, what they got going on here. When we slide to this point, look at how defenses are programmed now. And again, center getting a little bit too wide, making the collision, far number. But look at this exchange that these guys are doing to this, all right? As soon as he's got a dead pass rush, he's working this one, and this guy's trying to hit the hip of the guy that he's on. It's really well coached. And we're in position to this point. If you look at the left guard set, by getting further back here, we'll keep his, you know, look at how narrow his feet are right here. And that's working wide. So I'm not worried about narrow feet since we're doing it already. Like, all right, we're narrow footed and poorly footed here. Because look at how he's not dragging that foot for width. You want to have the second foot as wide and wide in this one. So the second one is the same base that you have. If we freeze it, we talked about this in the stance episode, right? Pass pro technique wise is this stance that you're in and you're replicating it over and over and over again. So your second set should be the stance that you started with from a body leverage standpoint. So you can see relatively with those guys and especially the hip hinge and the width of their base. That's what we're looking for. If you look at the left side here, look at how narrow they're through. All right. But this is why on the left side, all right, look, plant, kill. Look, nothing in my gap. I'm planting, you know, and his planting is pretty loose. And I'm looking for looper to blitzer to floater. All right. Coming from either my, the front side or the blind side. So he recognizes here comes looper and now I can go and attack him. From the left tackle standpoint, and this is a great look at it, all right? Look at his first set. The knee opens up and out here, flat, all right? By getting depth, getting back to this point in our kick set with our knee in, we can move with a wider step. But he takes two steps in his quarter turn to face him. As soon as he makes this collision, right? And this is one of the things that we told this guy all year is you just got to roll him up the field, roll him up the field. So he's doing exactly what he's coached to do in this, in his, you know, first year ever playing offensive line for real. Um, you know, makes the collision, but now look at the narrow edge going against a really good player. We can't give that, that short, not narrow edge, excuse me, but a very shallow, shallow here. When we talk about the pocket, it's very important to remember this. Pocket-wise, these guys set the width of the pocket. So we don't want them ever going back because it's going to collapse and put this guy in a coffin, all right? So we don't want them to, to really make it claustrophobic. They set the width. The first three guys here set the depth of the pocket. All right, and make sure that the quarterback has a step up through lane. So if we stop it right now, these guys are doing a good job of setting the depth. Our right tackle and our, our running back, who are now double teaming this guy, are staying right there with their width. It's this one here. All right, long enough to step up and throw or step up and go. And that's why we want to take our kill shots and get out of the way. If this guy just stands here the whole time, our quarterback can't do this. But because he goes and attacks, all right, we've got great step up opportunities here. Oh, man. So here we go, right? So pre snap, 
with the full slide, we're good. We're loaded to the, the side that we need to be. But here's, you know, an issue, and it depends. But if you count, there's two guys outside of this tackle. There's only one guy outside of this one. So we should be sliding this thing this way, pre-snap and ID in the front. The late stem probably affects it because right now all things are equal. But right now we need to be sliding it the other way to the field. And also this is part of the challenge too and being right with our assignment. We have a B gap threat. He is already thinking this guy is gonna go here, here, and then here, and this is the blitz that they're bringing since they have two off the edge. He's right for his thinking. I mean, he's smart with that thinking, right? But because look at our center here and the width that he's getting out of there, same with our guard, we're setting and we've got, you know, three over two to this point, okay? And our guard is up on the nose that's coming through here, but this is the issue is he's got to get to this point. And based on the slide here, he gets to this one. He's on this one. We're handling these three for these two. Running back's got to take nearest one. Somebody's coming free to this side because we did not slide it correctly. And this is what we can never, ever, 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 ever have. We can never have an interior guy be cut loose to come back for a linebacker. Linebackers can sack the quarterback. These guys can take the quarterback out of the game. So we cannot have this. And look at the collision. It's a big hit and it's a big, you know, it's a really big hit and a really big, you know, opportunity that we can have. And when you are calling slide protection, this is the space that we want. That's why we're calling it. We're not calling it because of this stuff out here. Okay. We're calling it because we need to have it shirt up on the inside. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, the, you know, really monster in-depth episode of um, slide protection. The next one that we'll be doing is lock protection. So that's, you know, a man in a slide. And again, um, I think it's really important when you're going through these protections is to put your mindset on the defensive side of the ball. So after you draw it up against a 4-2 box, and the guys all have a general concept of this. You need to start thinking, how will my opponents be game planning and, and beating this? If, if a team never changes their defense and keeps a base to that point, your pass protection becomes pretty simple, difficult with the technique, but simple. Guys know where they got to be. And if you can put your body between the defender and the, and the thrower, you're going to be in great shape. If you look at a lot of those pressures we had, Guess what the biggest common error was? We didn't put our body between the defender and the ball thrower, that guy, <laughs> the quarterback. And part of that is because we're paralysis or analysis. We're thinking too much. You can see how much movement those defense were doing, overcomplicating issues, bad with our splits, bad with our footwork, in bad position. Um, and I do want to shout out that O-line. I do know that I just kind of showed our – bad plays and stuff like that. But um, we um, we had a ton of great protections, but what can you learn from a great protection? It can turn into, well, they're not giving you a pass rush. Or, you know, I want, when you put this up, you should be working your worst case scenario and really be putting your guys in, in, in a bind there. Because if you train in your worst case and train in the most strenuous parts, the, the base stuff is going to become incredibly simple and easy. Um, if you think Dragon Ball Z, Goku is training in a, I, I watched it when I was a kid. I just remember him being in like some sort of sphere and it was like intensifying the gravity. And so he was like at a hundred times gravity. I think about this a lot when I train um, and him doing like push ups and stuff and the 100 times gravity. And then when he gets out, he's, you know, a dude, he's a superhero, right? And the same goes for offense linemen. If you train your pass pro in the biggest strain imaginable, uh, when you get out in the field, guys can play comfortable. They can play loose. And that's where you want them to be in pass pro. You don't want guys tightened up. And so even just looking at that um, and going through this, I can, you know, my mind is going and I'm really excited about 
you know, practice is coming up and, and training these guys to deal with these movements and stuff and, and really um, having a clear focus on what we need to get better at from a technique standpoint, uh, an assignment standpoint, ID and, and all of that stuff. So, um, you know, this is really beneficial. This is, you know, really why you got to be on top of pass protections is because of what the defense is doing for you. So um, that's going to do it for us today. Join us next time when we cover lock protection, which is man slide. So there you go. See you in the next one. Thank you.